Hello, friends, and welcome back. Um, last week, we learned about uh, how to identify acids and bases on paper, whether that was in their formula or with some of their descriptions or the kinds of things we found in our houses. Um, and today we get into um, how to quantify how acidic and or how basic something is using actual numbers instead of saying, oh, it tastes sour or, oh, it is slippery to touch. So, uh, of course, um, many people have determined how to do that. We're going to look at them right now. So um, please feel free to pause and write the notes as I go through them. Um, so we learned that acids have some H plus and bases have some OH minus, but the truth is that um, every solution, whether it's water or Gatorade or soda or whatever, that um, has some of both of H plus and OH minus. And the concentration, when we measure them, you'll see these brackets often um, as something that's very common to um, denote the molarity of something. So these brackets here will tell you, um, like this is this means concentration um, or immolarity of hydrogen or hydronium. They mean the same thing, H plus, hydrogen, hydronium, H3O plus, all those things mean the same. And so uh, the brackets just, just means concentration. It's just a shorthand for saying this is the concentration of H plus, this is the concentration of OH minus, and the concentration is measured in molarity. Um, the amount of H plus and OH minus, which is the same as H3O plus, uh, varies. When the solution is neutral, then they're equal. H plus equals OH minus. You would find that in like um, water, for example, pure distilled water. When the solution is acidic, uh, you probably would have guessed this, it has more H plus than OH minus. And when the solution is basic, it has less H plus compared to OH minus. Of course, since both H plus and OH minus are present in every single equation, or sorry, every single water-based solution, there's an equation that relates them. Uh, the equation is if you multiply them together, the concentration of H plus plus the concentration of OH minus, sorry, times H plus times OH minus will equal one times 10 to the negative 14th very small number. And that is the result when you multiply the two of them together in every single solution. This equation is often called the KW equation. Um, this is a constant, not that you care, but that's how it's referred to often. So as H plus um, and OH minus, they're related. As one goes up, the other one goes down. So you can think of them as a seesaw. If you have a lot of H plus, you're gonna have a little bit of OH minus. If you have a lot of OH minus, you're gonna have a little bit of H plus. And if you know one of the values, you can calculate the other one very easily. Um, like in this example problem here, it says calculate the concentration of OH minus for a solution that has a concentration of H plus equal to 2.91 times 10 to the negative ninth. Well, you would just plug it into the equation, which we just learned on the previous slide, and say that one times 10 to the negative 14th equals 2.91 times 10 to the negative ninth, and then solve for OH minus by dividing both sides by um, 10, or sorry, 2.91 times 10 to the negative ninth. So um, nobody likes doing those equations though because they are very small and minute and dilute concentrations. So uh, Johnny pH, um, actual name, invented the pH scale. And you may be familiar with that, which you'll see in the next slide. It's a measure of how acidic or how basic something is. Standard scale runs zero to 14, but you can go a little bit over and a little bit um, under in certain cases. But for 99% of um, solutions, the pH is gonna run from zero to 14. Acidic substances have a pH value below seven. Basic would be a pH value above seven. And neutral solutions have a pH value equal to seven. This is a picture of a um, common pH scale. And you can see there's lots of things that maybe you'd recognize on there. Um, and as we talked about last week, most things on the pH scale, the acidic side, so that'd be below seven here, have, um, are most of them are things that you eat or drink. I mean, say for battery acid and hydrochloric acid, but lemon juice, grapefruits, 
sodas, tomato juice, acid rain, coffee, and of course urine. Um, those things are things that you tend to eat or drink. And then uh, water is a pH of seven. Pure water just means pure H2O distilled water that you could buy in a container at Target or wherever else. And then as you go up above seven, you have pHs um, that represent things that are basic. And these tend to be cleaning solutions, you know, Drano, bleach, soapy water, ammonia, um, and then some other things, baking soda and seawater. These all tend to be slightly basic on the scale. The pH scale itself um, was derived by taking the, the log of the, of the so to say, I'm sorry, the negative log of the H plus ion concentration, the hydronium ion concentration. Uh, thus, the formula for pH is the negative log of H plus. Um, we're not going to go too crazy with logs. At most, you'll just be typing in negative and then log and then H and then the concentration and hitting enter. So if you are having like, some sort of log shell shock from math class or something like that, don't worry. We're just going to be using uh, log in this capacity to solve for simple pH problems, which we're going to do um, in the next video. So thanks for watching. Okay, bye. Hi, welcome back. So before we get into uh, doing some kind of straightforward pH calculations, uh, there's a couple things you should know about um, some of the problems. And that is namely that oftentimes the question might ask, like, what's the pH of something that has HCl in it? And it gives you this concentration of HCl. Like, let's say the problem says, oh, the concentration of HCl is 0.2 molar. Well, what you need to know about that is that when you put HCl in water, it's going to break apart into two pieces, H plus and Cl minus. We don't care about the Cl minus. We care about the H plus. You can identify it as an acid because it has the H plus in it. So when I say that something is the HCl concentration is 0.2 molar, that also means, because it's a one-to-one, -one, that the concentration of H plus is also 0.2 molar. Okay, So is the Cl minus, but we don't care about that. But this is so another way of saying that um, an acid, when it, in this case it's an acid, um, whatever its concentration is would be the concentration of the same as the H plus. It does get tricky sometimes because, for example, if I told you I had some sulfuric acid, and let's say the sulfuric acid was 0.1 molar, and the question was like, well, what's the uh, pH of the sulfuric acid? Uh, well, if it tells you H2SO4, it's a trick because it doesn't just break into H plus and SO4 minus 2. We don't care about that one because you notice there's a 2 there, so it actually breaks into two H pluses. So if this concentration is 0.1 molar, guess what? You could do a very simple in-your-head calculation. You'd say, oh, well, 0.1 molar for the H2SO4, and I know that there are two H pluses for every one H2SO4. It's like a mole ratio, basically. You don't need to write it out. You can just do it in your head and say that this one must be 0.2 molar. And then you can use that calculation, the H plus, uh, from there. So that's one trick you have to watch out for. It works for bases, too. So if I said it was MgOH2, and you identify that as a base because you're like, oh, it has an OH in it, so it must be a base. And you're correct. It's called magnesium hydroxide. And when you put it in water, it breaks apart into magnesium but it also breaks apart into not one, but two hydroxides. We don't care about the magnesium for our calculations. We only care about the hydroxide. So if this one is, let's say, I don't know, 0.8 molar, and the problem is like, oh, you have some magnesium hydroxide, and it's 0.8 molar, what's the pH of that magnesium hydroxide? You can't go with 0.8. You have to go with two times 0.8, because you're going to go with this number here for the OH minus. So you would say, well, be, this concentration is 1.6 molar, because you would double it. Okay, so that's an important fact that you'll see in some of these problems, and it takes some getting used to, because, of course, what it means is to read problems carefully and take your time. So let's go through some of these problems. Kind of get an idea of how to do, like, the most simple kind of pH problems. Okay, so here's an example. So let's determine the pH of a 0 0.0034 molar HNO3 solution. You're thinking, oh, well, pH equals negative log of... H plus concentration, and I don't see H plus anywhere in there. Well, you're right, but you have to remember that HNO3, since it's an acid, that's the same as the H plus concentration. Okay, that's an important fact to remember. If there were two H's here, you would double this number, which I think we'll get to on one of the problems later. So if you want to find the, um, the 
pH of the solution, you take the negative log of 0 0.0034, and you literally just type in negative, then log, then 0 0.0034 on your calculator, and you'll get, for this one, 2.47. pH does not have a unit. There's no label for it. It's just the pH of 2.47, though, because we could have written pH in front, okay? Uh, for number two, a little bit differently. It says determine the pH of a 4.3 times 10 to the negative fourth molar NaOH solution. Okay, well, this one has OH, so that's one difference, okay? This is not an acid, it's a base, and I can't just plug in this number into the equation first because the pH, as we saw here, is the negative log of H+. plus. This is not H+, plus, it's OH-. minus. So, but is there a way to get from OH- minus to H+, plus? and there is. We showed it to you on the slides um, when you were taking notes today, and to do that, I'm going to say H+, plus equals, and you just rearrange your equation. This is the KW equation, which I'll write over here. KW equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14 um, times, and that's H plus times OH minus. So I plug my numbers, and I want to solve this for H plus. It'd be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by uh, the problem, number the problem, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 4. Do that, and you get the H plus equals 2.33 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. Okay, but that's not quite what the question asks because now I've got H plus, so I want to find pH. So I have to do one more step. It's a two-step problem. I'm just going to take the negative log of that, negative log of 2.33 times 10 to the negative 11th. For my pH equals the pH, and then that equals 10.63. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. This is a base. And a base would have a pH above 7, and this is well above 7, so there you go. Okay, problem number 3 is similar, um, but the trick again, that's also a base, but there are two of them. There are two OH minuses, right? So when you put that barium hydroxide in some water, it's going to give up two OHs for every one of the BaOH2s. So this has determined the pH of a 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar solution of barium hydroxide. First thing you want to do is just double that number because there's a 2 right there. So instead of 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth, call it 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. That would be the concentration of OH minus. How do I know it's OH minus? Because there's an OH in the formula. Okay, and I have, like the last problem, I got to get from OH minus to H plus. So I have to do some uh, two steps here to make it make it happen. So again, I'm going to find H plus first by taking 1 times 10 to the negative 14th and dividing by 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. When you do that, you end up with 4.54 times 10 to the negative tenth. Three molar. It's not quite there, right? Because I want to do um, is find the pH. And so now I use my other equation. The pH equals the negative log of H plus. So take the negative log of 4.54 times 10 to the negative tenth. That equals the pH, and if you do that on your calculator really quick, you'll find the pH equals 9.34. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense again because this is OH minus, sorry, it's a base, and so the pH is going to be above 7. So that makes sense. Okay, the other kinds of problems that are maybe a little more challenging is that um, basically the same idea, but instead of giving you the concentration straight off the bat like these problems did, you'd have to find the concentration first. So a problem like four or five, you got to do some concentration math before you can do the pH math. So like last unit math before you can do today's. So I've got, uh, this one says, determine the pH of 2.85 gram solution of HBr. It's dissolved in enough water to make 3.81 milliliters of solution. Okay, right off the bat in your brain, you're like, you should think, okay, is this an acid or a base? And it has the H in front, so it's an acid. First thing you want to do is find the concentration of that acid. So concentration is moles per liter. This is, of course, grams. we got to convert our grams to moles first. So we take our 2.85 grams of HBr, and the molar mass of that is 80.9 grams per mole. Do that, and you get 0 0.31 moles. Okay, But we want concentration, not just the moles. That Concentration is moles per liter, right? So we, now we have use this liters number, and we're going to divide this by... 3.81 liters, moles per liters equals concentration, and that would be 
0.08 molar. And this is going to be, because of this, H+. Plus, right? It's an acid, so we're talking about H+, plus right now, because it has the H in the formula. Then, if you want to find pH, that should be pretty straightforward, because you have the H+, plus now, so you take the negative log of 0 0.08 molar that equals the pH. And in this case, if you plug that into your calculator, you get 1.09 for your pH. Which makes sense, because this is an acid, H in the front, so your pH is going to be below 7. Final problem just kind of puts all two all these problems together. Determine the pH of 10 grams of sulfuric acid dissolved in enough water to make 5 liters of solution. Okay, so it has the H in it. It's an acid. It has two of them, though, so we're going to have to double at some point. But we have to find the concentration of this whole thing first. So concentration, moles per liter. Convert your 10 grams of sulfuric acid into moles. The molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98 grams per mole. That's not equals, it's times. So that equals about 0 0.102 moles of sulfuric acid. Of course, the 0 0.102 moles is sitting in 5 liters. You're going to divide it by 5 liters to find the concentration. And if you do that, you end up with about 0 0.02 molar. Now that 0 0.02 molar is for the H2SO4, but we want the H+. Plus. And we know that there are two H's for every one H2SO4. So what we're saying is, like on the previous, in the notes, or sorry, at the beginning of the slide, um, H2SO4 breaks apart into two H's and one SO4 minus. We don't care about that guy. We only care about this. And so if I've got if my concentration of the H2SO4 is 0 0.02, um, then the concentration of the H plus is just two times that. So we take two times 0 0.02. Of course, that equals 0 0.04. That's the concentration of the H+. Plus. And now we're ready to solve for pH, right? Because pH is the negative log of H+. Plus. So we just take the negative log of 0 0.04. I ended up with about 1.39 for my pH. So this kind of runs the gamut of all the different kinds of pH problems you'll find for this week. Um, and we've got straight up easies to have to think a little bit and do some more math to find out. Um, there's a practice worksheet you can work on that will hopefully help you out. As always, it's a pleasure teaching you on video. Bye!